right, so the trick with the nut is that because of the way that the bow um, pushes a string down pretty aggressively, the nut has to be uh, higher than on an electric guitar, um, even on an acoustic guitar. And I've gone back and forth a bunch of different ways um, how to get the nut the right height. I think I finally found a good solution. So, the trick is instead of a single zip tie for the nut, we're going to use the exact same zip ties, but we have to double layer them. Okay, so for the nut installation, we're going to need two zip ties. Um, the first one, you just stick in the same way you have every fret that we've done. Okay, but I want you to leave, uh, leave it kind of high for now, and then get some super glue. Um, this is the brush on kind. Uh, I found that I make less mess and waste less with this type, so this is my preferred kind of super glue. So I am gonna brush it on inside, everywhere where it's gonna touch. <clears throat> and then, pull it down, and do the same thing that you do for any frets popping up on the uh, fingerboard. Press and hold for 30 seconds. Um, so a tip, and slash trick that you're gonna see coming up over and over and over again is uh, something that might happen as a result of doing this is that the uh, super glue might leave like a white residue uh, outside the nut and you know potentially my skin might stick to some of the super glue that squeezes out. Um, well, if anything leaves a residue uh, that is not black, well, that's why we use black, because then you can just uh, detail over it with a Sharpie marker, and no one will be the wiser. Um, and that is why you use black, friends, for your fingerboard. Um, okay, so, as you can see, I already have some uh, white gunk there, per my, my discussion, and uh, now there's black uh, lacquer. The super glue uh, makes it wet again. Anyways, we'll go back over that with the Sharpie marker, but this is only half one of the two um, zip ties, so what you gotta do now is Cut off this first zip tie. I'm gonna give it some wings there, and then you put you put over slash around it a second zip tie. You're gonna want to get this get the box about the right spot where it agrees with your other ones. Now you need to put super glue on top of the first zip tie. So we're gonna have a double decker zip tie sandwich. So slide it through the other side and pull it tight. Use pliers here. Make sure that it looks nice and flush the fingerboard, and uh, then I'm going to bring in our fastener zip tie. Tighten it down like all the others. And when that is dry, we are going to have 
basically a double height version of the zip tie with all the specs the same except for the height. As I mentioned you can see that what we get is basically just a fret that's twice as high. That's exactly what we want and um, when we go to string this up we're going to be cutting slots in the nut uh, in the top layer. We're going to be filing slots into it uh, so that the strings stay in the track they're supposed to be in but <clears throat> I don't have to worry about that right now. Now, like I said, got some discoloration from the super glue. Well, back sharpie marker to the rescue. Cover them up. Mistakes. Since whenever they were invented. And there we go. I'm basically not going to be able to see that. <clears throat> Um, one other thing to note, so I have a lot of slack here, um, but this is still pretty tall, uh, right here in the back side of the nut. Well, since these are glued in on the top, you don't actually need the back side, so I'm not going to cut it off now, but when I go to install this on the neck, if it doesn't look like it's fitting flush, under that nut area. I'll just chop those off because we don't actually need them to hold uh, the nut in place as we do with the other frets. All right, so now that we have our neck prepared and our fingerboard is done, we can try to line them up and see what we get. Now if I try to push it down, I can see where things are working and where we have problems. Because the screws will hold it down to the neck much the same way that I'm doing here. So it looks like everything is double check this side it looks like everything is gonna be fine <coughs> except for the nut as I mentioned before I um, thought that might be the case but you don't need boxes on the back side so au revoir now there we go much better. So the um, you know those holes in the front are supposed to align with the previous location of the nut, but that would be here. I think I'm going to scoot mine forward just a little bit to there. And the only difference, the only change that is going to make. Um, is the bridge will just have to be a smidge further forward, but you kind of have to feel out the adjustment of that anyways, so it doesn't really matter. Um, well, maybe I'll just leave it on the nut line actually, after all. Well, regardless, it is time to get some screws and start installing this fingerboard. All right, screws, 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 screws. What do you want to use? <laughs> that rhymed. Um, okay, so it's so like I said. For me, what I, the way this template is designed, is that these double as position markers, right? So for the three, five, seven, nine, twelve, fifteen, seventeen, nineteen, twenty-one. Um, you're going to want to use chrome or gold, just some contrasting color, um, so that it will be a visible dot marker to help you uh, find your position on the fretboard. For these two up front and the first fret, 
I'm going to use black screws. And if you don't have black screws, you can just use all the same silver screws and then take our friend, the Sharpie marker, to the head of the screw when you're done to hide it because you don't want the one in the first fret and you don't want to see those either. I mean, that's all that's optional. This is just what I do. Um, so, what kind of screws to use? Well, so two important things. Thing one, you need to fit in the holes you made in the fingerboard. So that's all the way down. And then thing two is when they're all the way down, you need to screw in to the wood so as to be held in place on the neck. So, as you can see, this will not seat all the way down now, which means that there is probably enough screw there to uh, get this to bite the wood. You just want screws that are long enough to, to securely bite the wood because if they are too long, they can in fact go through and out the back of your neck you don't want. Now, they have to be pretty extremely long for that to happen, but I uh, can't say I haven't done that. I'm pretty sure I did at some point. Um, so what kind of screws are we dealing with here? Well, uh, I don't know much about screws, honestly. It says, uh, it says number, number four. Something, something. Now I think those are these these little guys, and uh, they're pretty short. So I'm actually gonna use uh, these. You can see the length difference. For those who want to get technical, the uh, little ones are half an inch and the bigger ones are, yeah, uh, 11/16. Number four, 11/16, I guess is what we're dealing with, I think. Once again, not a screw expert. Um, yeah, those should do the job without putting us through the neck. Also remember we are, except for the 12, we're going straight into the middle, which the middle is the fattest part of the neck, which minimizes your chances of boring through. But you still gotta make sure, measure twice, cut once, as my dad taught me, as most people's dads teach them. I think, I don't know. Hopefully I didn't just trigger someone. Okay. So, I also have a black screw that is about the same size. I mean, they're not identical, but it's close enough that it'll do the job. So, I'm going to make sure that I am centered here. Make sure that the neck feels like it's equidistant on either side. And I'm gonna put the first fret screw in. Because it is a single screw, it'll home us in where we wanna be. Okay, and then the second screw that I'm going to put in is the 15 because it is the last screw at the end of the fretboard before we go off the neck. So I'm going to put that in because once again it will give us get everything centered so that we're screwing everything else in. We know that because of those two, that everything is positioned correctly. All right. So there we go. 
Those are both in. Now we do the rest. Now you may have some cases, like I'm pretty sure this one here, at the nine, where the fret is directly below the hole. So I'm just going to bias the screw a little bit to one side to avoid the fret. See the because we need to hold the fretboard tightly down across the entire length of the neck in order to squish down the zip tie connectors on the back. That's why we need to have we need all these screws working in tandem with one another in order to achieve that. Um, so. Here, a couple ones here, 12. And you see, because, because of those nice countersunk recesses, the heads of the screws are below the surface of the fingerboard, so they're not going to get in our way at all. Beautiful! <clears throat> Let's see. And... direction. Since the broken off head of the first one was the one direction, so we had to go the other way. All right, so now all of our structural screws are in place. Look at it. It looks pretty nice and flat. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to put Last three screws in, I'm going to use these shorter ones, ones that came out of this box, um, because they only have to screw into the PVC as dot markers, as there is no, there's no neck under them to screw into. So, I'm just going to pop these in for a consistent look. Put in our last black screws uh, up in front of the nut, and that'll be it. Now, the screws here, you can put hot glue on the back to hold them in place. Um, honestly, they're not really going to get in the way of anything, so I'm just going to leave them there the way they are. Um, Alright, so. Just need two black screws for, for the nut here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This should work. It's 
again, just random screws I have laying around in my drawer. I just have a drawer of assorted screws and bits and bobs that I've picked up over the years. And that sound where it's going pop, 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 pop. You, you want to avoid that. That's bad. You're stripping your screw out. Okay, so so there we go. There's all the uh, all the uh, screws in and the fingerboard is attached to the neck. So other than putting on the headstock decal and installing the tuners and string retainer bar that's it, aside from filling the sides. So, this is something I've done differently at varying times, with varying builds. Um, but when, because this has <clears throat> exposed frets, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use wood filler to fill in these edges kind of hide at least the part of the frets that's above the fingerboard just to make it look a little nicer especially like here you can see the fingerboard wasn't wide enough to the back so you can see kind of a hump here that's not really desirable so what we can do is if we put the wood filler in on both sides um, then we can smooth it down and sand it and then we can stain it to match the neck, like we did with uh, this nut fill down here, or we can uh, paint it black. And that's probably what I'm gonna do, especially because the, the sides of this, uh, this fingerboard, it's a little splotchy, the paint isn't real solid, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the wood filler on the sides, let it dry for at least a day, and then tape off the neck and and uh, spray just some uh, black lacquer to uh, cover that up and recreate that edge between the fingerboard and the neck. So let's put on that wood filler now. But uh, getting there feels nice. It's chunky. It's chunky, but it's 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 good. It's a nice solid feel. Um, like it. So I'm going to start where I need the most, which is the base side. Don't be shy with this stuff because you can sand it down, sand it off later. Um, but you want to make sure you get enough in there to completely fill it and create the, uh, give yourself enough material to create the curvature that you want when you sand it down. there because the fingerboard actually starts to overhang a little bit. Let's go back and hit spots where it looks like I have concavity. Don't want concavity. As this dries that's only gonna get worse. Make sure you have enough <laughs> completely fill in. enough material to create the rounded shape out of it that you are going to want. And by the way, this stuff is probably like hazardous and it's not supposed to touch your skin. I just have I always get better results when I 
apply it finger paint style just because I have a better feel for it. But uh, I do wash my hands immediately after doing this thoroughly, probably more than once. about being able to get the neck back off should you need to repair a fret um, with the wood filler. We're basically going to be um, sanding off most of it, but it probably will just Lit and come along for the ride with the fingerboard when it comes off. Um, so it'll, no matter what it does, it'll be hard enough at that point that it should be fine. You'll just have a seam when you're done, and you can either fill that back up with wood filler and repeat this process, or can just a uh, sharpie marker over the seam line and uh, call it good. And that front, I'm going to try to fill that in too, just so I can clean that up. full up here. So would fill it all the way around. Now I'm gonna set that off to the side, let it dry for a day. And now that, that is done, I'm going to go wash the crap out of my hands. Oh yes. Okay. Now this stuff is dry. Go ahead and uh, sand, sand it off.
so after one pass with the 100 grit, um, looking pretty good. I'm gonna suck up this dust and then wipe this down with a little damp paper towel to see what we're dealing with. All right, damp paper towel. As you can see, definitely did take the uh, the lacquer off the edges of the fingerboard there, but, uh, but that's okay. Um, let's see. Okay, well, I got a couple spots I gotta hit to get some big chunks off, and then I think I'm gonna hit the rest of it with 320 and then figure out how I'm gonna paint it. So, so I'm pretty happy with how the filling went for the most part. Um, so the only thing that I'm not too fond of is front here there's some like divots and nicks um, from where when I sanded that front part it just knocked some stuff off um, just because there was so much filler in there so um, I'm going to do a second pass with the filler, smooth that in, and give this all another day to dry, and, uh, and then we'll go, we'll go re-paint the fingerboard. All right, so went back in and used the 320 to uh, sand down the uh, wood filler. One last pass. Now I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, so what we're gonna do is going to tape off the um, the neck. Um, I'm going to use duct tape because I find it seals the edges a whole lot better and I'm not too worried about um, 
you know, getting leaving sticky residue or something behind because that's already um, you know, the neck's already pretty scratched up from all the sanding and stuff, so it doesn't really matter at this point. Um, it's gonna have a slightly rustic vibe, but um, so. Lay this tape down over the front, down the sides, and then also I'm going to mask off a couple of frets because I, uh, I went ahead and filled in the first fret screw because it was distracting me even though it was black, it was too shiny, so it was still drawing my eye as a position marker, which it isn't, so that was confusing, so I went ahead and filled it in like I have them previous instruments. Um, Good. Now I just need to bag this side. So last, um, I just don't want to get paint on the fret proper because um, the, uh, the string rubbing on it would uh, would uh, rub it off. It's just not. You don't want to paint on your actual frets. So. those. That's good enough because I just need to spray between those two. Alright, I'm going to spray this joker. It's about to rain, so I better do it quick. Alright, since it's about to rain, and outside is not a super great option, and I don't have to spray a whole lot, I'm just going to go ahead and do this here inside the basement, um, on top of this box. So, So, this fingerboard repaint is not fully dry, but it's dry enough that we can take the tape off and see what it's looking like.
All right, well, it's not perfect. Um, there are some spots. The paint got onto the wood. So, uh, gotta get those off. Either scraping them or sandpaper. And there are spots where the black didn't come out as black. We can use Sharpie to uh, blacken that further. I just can't stop humming or singing Pure Imagination. It's just a great song. I've been doing that for months now, so I don't know how long it's going to last. So, as I intended to say, but I'm not sure I did, this entire process of uh, putting in the wood filler, having to repaint and all this stuff is uh, it's optional. It's not necessarily recommended. Um, most of my instruments I've just accepted the fingerboard being a little off and that's a lot less work. I have to do all this correction stuff and um, I don't know if this is going to be a better outcome honestly. So uh, once again I've made your the neck and your template a little wider toward the back and so hopefully you won't have to do any of this um, correction work but I'm going to leave this in the tutorial in case you do and then you'll see how I do it and hopefully that will be helpful Alright, so that's pretty much it um, for the neck. I did have a little overspray here that I need to sand off. Okay, so um, there we go. So that's the neck. Done.